you hear me? All yeah, of you, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We'll just wait for a minute and then start. Okay, so uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know it's a very, very, very hot day today. And of course, uh, you know, all must be feeling very lazy. But uh, then it's okay. I mean, we are online and it's not uh, going to be too uh, heavy on you, I'm sure. Uh, so today, I can't uh, hear you. Uh, I can hear you. No, I can just can't... lip read you, but I can't hear you. Oh, is your, uh, I mean, uh, others, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm audible to everyone. Can you hear me, Lulu? <laughs> no? Okay, so... Hello, Lulu? Yes, can you hear me? <laughs> no, still no. Okay, she will rejoin. Let's see and wait for her. Can you hear me now? Yes. Very yes, clear. Am I audible? <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. Anyway, so uh, I think we can begin. Uh, so participants, we are back with a new topic today and a new speaker, of course. Uh, so before we move on to the topic, uh, let me introduce uh, our speaker, uh, our resource person for today. Uh, she is Dr. Lulu Mariam Borgohai and is an assistant professor. Uh, in the Department of English, DHS, Kanoi College, Dibrugarh. Uh, her specialization is American studies, and her field of interest is are critical theory, post-colonial studies, intertextuality, and American studies. 
she will be dealing uh, with two topics actually for four days. Uh, today and tomorrow she will, will be doing uh, the funny uh, funny boy by uh, Sham Salvadure, and uh, then again day after uh, day after, and then the next day uh, she will be dealing with Edgar Allan Poe's uh, The Pearl and the Letter. So today we'll start with uh, uh, funny boy, and uh, over to you, Lulu. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mona Lisa. That um, introduction was slightly redundant, but thank you so much. Uh, am I audible to all of you? Kindly respond. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, okay, okay. All right. A very good afternoon, late afternoon. In fact, a very warm afternoon. I don't know about your places here. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's leading with heat. Okay. So you have an idea of what is funny boy or could you procure the text i think not because uh, given the condition lockdown funny boy is also not easily available and your online stores are also closed so let me just uh, begin with it and i'll try to touch upon the main ideas because uh, as you can understand um, i uh, smuggled out two class from mona lisa ma'am <laughs> so that i can speak at least in some kind of detail we have a funny boy by this uh, Sri Lankan Tamil writer, uh, Tamil, uh, why I insist he is Tamil, because uh, his father is Tamil and he comes from a Sinhalese mother. And, uh, you know, they are actually exiles who leave to uh, leave for Canada, Toronto, Canada, because of ethnic violence in Sri Lanka. And uh, this particular novel that we shall be talking about, Funny Boy, I'm sure you do not have the text. If some of you can at least procure it from your elder siblings or maybe teachers, this is Funny Boy, okay, by Shyam Salvadurai. So we have uh, we have this particular novel, which was um, you know uh, published in 1994, and it actually depicts the maturation of its narrator. Here you have the protagonist R.G. Arjun. Uh, Shelvaratnam. He comes from a Tamil minority family in, um, uh, you know, Colombo, and he comes from a very uh, middle class family. And it's the backdrop is the increasing hello? civil. Hello. Yes. yes. You are audible. You are audible. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we have this um, increasing civil disturb dist disturbances at the backdrop of this uh, entire novel. And, um, you know, a very anti-Tamil kind of feeling, discrimination and violence, as well as, you know, another very telling thread that runs through the novel is, um, you know, R.G. or Arjun Shalvat Ratnam, R.G. as they call him in the novel. He's the narrator here. He's the protagonist and his own, you know, his uh, growing awareness of his homosexuality. I'm sure you understand what is homosexuality. That is, he has uh, desires and uh, you know tendencies which are, you know, you can say, uh, different from other uh, male members or male gender. All right. So you have this young boy. He begins, you know, in retrospect. He begins. Um, you know, he's an adult now, but he speaks of the past when, as a seven-year-old child, he goes. Um, he spends his day in his uh, grandparents' house, okay, in Ramanaigam Road. He and his 15 of his cousins, actually all of them, they are dropped in that particular house. His grandparents, Amachi and Apachi, you know, very, uh, you know, tall, maternal and uh, paternal figures. So he grows up there and, uh, you know, he doesn't grow up there, of course. He goes to, the, to their house with his two other siblings, Digi, his elder brother, and his younger sister, Sonali. So what we shall see here is, as I had told you, uh, you know, on the one hand, there is this Tamil Sinhalese conflict. Let me just give you a very short uh, uh, epilogue into this and introduction into this. The Tamil Catholic is a minority in Sri Lanka. Okay. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's basically a Sinhalese state and they believe uh, they, they were followers of Buddhism. So as minorities, they had to, 
you know, constantly be part of this discrimination process. And this is uh, in the backdrop of 1977 to 1983. This period that I'm talking about is actually just preceding that of the, you know, ethnic riots that took place in Jaffna and, uh, and in fact, the whole of Sri Lanka. So what happens is here you have a young boy who, you know, who grows up and he realizes his double minority state. Okay, double minority status. I hope you understand. Okay, I'm uh, try to, uh, you know, liquidate it. It's a double minority status because number one, he is a Tamil there in a Sinhalese uh, majority state. And number two, he is a homosexual. But of course, as a seven year old, he did not realize that he is a homosexual. Uh, remember, just before a while, I told you that he goes to his, he and his siblings, Digi and Sonali, they are dropped at their grandparents' house, um, uh, you know, uh, one of the Sundays every month, which is, which they typically call as the spend the day, which means, you know, you, all the children, all the cousins, they spend the day in the Apache and Amachi's grandfather and grandmother's house at Ramanagam Road. And, uh, you know, this is a day that they look forward to because their parents just drop them and they take their own time. They go off. OK. And there is no parental supervision. So they are free to do whatever they want to do. Now, uh, why this particular spend the day becomes central to the entire novel is because here you understand, uh, you know, not only you as a reader, not only RG as the narrator and the self, but also his parents, his society, his community. Everybody understands, you know, comes to understand RG's inclination. Okay. Uh, you know, his sexual orientation. So, uh, you know, uh, this, what happens is when he goes to this particular on, part, on these particular Sundays for his spender day, he is more aligned to the games that his girl cousins play, especially the game Bride Bride. Okay, so he would like to, rather than joining his boy cousins who play the, you know, game of cricket, right? He, he, he is more aligned to his girl cousins and he would, he, he was a very imaginative, artistic um, little child and he would uh, create these beautiful you know the very environment of wedding the you know ceremony the dress the food everything you know the, in the game in that particular game that they call bride right bride right he would invent all these things and then everybody around him would perform these rituals and um, uh, you know he was almost the leader of this uh, girl cousins group and as the leader, he was also chosen as the bride. Okay, please remember that he was chosen as the bride, not as the groom, because, uh, you know, because um, he liked doing it. He did it the best. He acted the best in it. And he liked wearing the bridal, uh, bridal sari, the dress, the flowers, and everything that a bride um, actually, uh, you know, did during her wedding. So... But uh, gradually, an intrusion happens. Their cousin Tanuja, she comes back from Canada. Okay. And uh, immediately, because Tanuja is an, uh, number one, she's an outsider, and number two, because she is very fat. So they invent a name for her immediately. She is called her fatness. So in the first two uh, weeks of the spender day, Tanuja was quite a very, uh, you know, domicile obedient kind of good cousin in the game but then finally she registers her difference okay she says that why should um, rgp arjun shelvaratnam this little boy why should rg be the bride i can be the bride okay why and why should rg at all play this game because he is a man so this awareness of you know the girl's world and the boy's world comes very early and comes as a light shock to this young boy uh, so what happens is tanuja you know she she goes to the extent she's very jealous she goes to the extent of complaining to the elders and upon the elders intrusion you know especially um, um rg's 
parents okay they are very uh, father particularly he is very very uh, he is scared that probably his son would turn out to be funny okay now funny becomes a euphemy for can you say funny becomes a euphemy for queer okay somebody who is homosexual so he actually overhears his parents uh, quarreling over his sexual in inclinations even as early as a 7 year old child and the father scolds the mother saying that you know you should not allow him to enter your room enter your privacy when you dress up you know rg rg as i had told you he was particularly particularly an artistic imaginative child and he he liked the you know liked the fact that his mother would sometimes at the evening when before going out somewhere she would you know so meticulously put around the sari and then how she would do her hair and you know that this entire uh, ritual no, was very very um, captivating for little arjun but then uh, father intrudes and father inhibits this entire process so eventually rg is estranged from his father number 1 and estranged from his girl cousins estranged from his mother all right so the, the you know actually this particular lesson and this particular novel it's uh, divided into six chapters the first chapter pigs can't fly okay the the very title is very very the very subtitle it's very very telling because when rg insists that he will play with his girl cousins his mother tells this pigs can't fly you know you have certain Uh, social obligations social limitations which you cannot cross all right in other words here she is trying to say please remember that this is 1970 1980 sri lanka in other words she is trying to say that you know you cannot um, live a, lead a gay life in this kind of a society so you have to force yourself to be what you are not okay so but then for the this is very very stultifying for rg you understand stultifying something that is very very dull something that is very very limited for rg okay he tries to play cricket with his male cousins he cannot really internalize okay and he is also actually driven out of the cricket game because he is not a very good player and he in fact manipulates his driving out because he wants to be in the bright bright game with his girl cousins so uh, uh, if you if you can see the novel or if you have read the novel if you uh, read the novel in the future you would see that uh, there are certain troops okay troops you understand they are opa certain troops certain uh, motifs certain themes that uh, actually operate throughout the text first you would see that uh, definitely it's in the style of a realist fiction and therefore you will have the domestic heroine okay uh, i'll come back to this concept of the domestic heroine we actually do not have a woman here as the protagonist number 2 you have the lyric uh, epiphany okay which states the theme you know everything becomes epiphanic everything comes to a kind of you know raised uh, sense of awareness and understanding and this is narrated in a very lyrical way by the narrator you also have the star crossed love plots okay here in this particular novel lovers do not actually have a very fairy tale ending and then uh what happens also the reader's sympathy is drawn from you know the reader is uh, trained okay trained in the sense that the reader is initially given uh, uh bits of shock and then the reader is led to a greater shock we will come to this as examples i'm just um, letting out the troops okay i'm just uh, i was trying to structure the novel into these certain troops and then of course you have the other team and motif of the colonial intertext please remember the chiam salvadurai uh, belong to the post colonial sri lanka sri lanka had gained independence in 1948 one year after uh, india but then legacies do remain okay and uh, here you also have a very uh, surprisingly post colonial little boy narrator okay who 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 tries to be 
uh, resisting of certain codes of conduct. Right. So, um, as I had told you earlier, that um, RG is doubly, you know, doubly denied here in the sense that he comes from the Tamil minority family in um, uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka. And number two, he himself is a homosexual, which is why he is also a, uh, you know, uh, an other, a discriminated self in his own family. All right. And which is also why he has to be estranged from his mother, his mother whom he loves so much, his mother whom he held as the ultimate epitome of beauty. Okay. He would oftentimes call her as the goddess of Sinhalese and Tamil cinema. Okay. He would oftentimes see her as an actress. Right. So, um, you know, as I had told you earlier, uh, the plot of the star-crossed lovers, right? Star-crossed, star-crossed lover. In the very first um, chapter, you are introduced to how uh, this particular boy, um, as a young boy, as a seven-year-old boy, he has to. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah. Yes. Yes. As a seven year young boy, he has to be estranged from his mother because of what his father thinks him thinks of him. And this is, you know, a breaking away from the Oedipal triangle of love. I'm sure you understand what is the the story, the Sophocles famous story of Oedipus and, uh, you know, his, you know, everybody's every male child's inclination towards the mother. The mother is the first lover of the child. Right. So this first instance of you know, love, you know, as a star cross plot is seen in this breaking of the Oedipal triangle between mother and son. And we shall see more of this later. So ultimately, we have um, uh, this little RG in the typical Althusserian subject position. You know, you're a like third sem, most of you, you are third sem major uh, students. So never mind who is or what is Althusser. Definitely will come to, uh, you'll come to it later. But then here, what I'm trying to say here, he is subject. He is subjectified. Okay. He is uh, suppressed, right? He is the repressed other so you have the exemplary subject position and uh, with rg uh, you know the wonderful way in which uh, the text is written woven with rg the narrator the reader also identifies himself again and again okay so um, now another thing that i want to say is you know that game of cricket that i was telling you it was uh, played by the male members Somehow, there was also a girl cousin, Mina, there who chose to play with the boys. And yet her, you know, masculine features or her, you know, crossing of boundaries or her playing of a masculine game, you know, so-called masculine, nothing is masculine or feminine as such. So is, is never questioned. Mina is never questioned. But here you have uh, this boy being questioned, as well as her fatness, the cousin who returns from uh, uh, Canada. Her fatness also has very strictly masculine features. But her you know, masculinity is never, never questioned. Uh, whereas his femininity becomes a, you know, uh, uh, you know, a kind of um, apple of discord, a kind of uh, cause of conflict between a very in a, in a very subterranean way in a very suppressed way in the family so um and uh, this game of cricket okay the territory the male uh, the the territory that the male occupied it was you know in the front garden of the house apache and amasi's house in the road and in the field in the front of the house so and uh, the bright bright game the feminine game was always at the backyard back Court. Okay, so you you can also understand the mm, you know divisions of gender here, the speciality here, special. Okay, S P A T I A L. What I'm trying to say is the location of space. How discrimination also occurs in this particular point. And then uh, something very important in this uh, game of cricket. Okay, which you will also find in the last uh, second last chapter, penultimate chapter, is the struggle for power. Okay. 
the struggle for power in the sense uh, these um, you know boys they claim to be the captain they claim to be only on one side or on the other side and there is this inherent struggle for power in the patriarchal world so but then our, uh, uh, you know rg has chosen the bride bride game also because he he thinks that he cross dresses okay i had told you he, he chooses to be wearing the dress of a woman the bride the queen okay so he cross dresses now why does he cross dresses what does what, what does it uh, kind of um, you know uh, provoke you to think something why why should he be cross dressing why should he be wearing the dress of a woman okay now as he says it helps him to leave the constraints of myself and ascend into another more beautiful self so he finds his own male self very very entrapping okay he finds it very very entrapping and therefore he transcends into another more beautiful self transcends okay you know the word transgender again transcending gender transcends transcending his sex transcending his individual self transcending his ethnic identity okay so in in the dress of a bride he envisions himself as somebody who is you know larger than life magnified somebody who is almost like the goddesses of the sinhalese and tamil screen the cinema okay so uh as we go over to the next chapter we have a uh, radha aunty's chapter where again uh you know, very subtly you you find the um surfacing of ethnic values radha aunty uh, she 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 is supposed to be the favorite aunt of little rg okay and also because radha aunty is much younger than all of rg's parents and aunts and uncles so radha aunty comes back from uh, america and uh, before coming back she is actually engaged to um, a tamil uh, boy in america okay the nagendras rajin the nagendras now uh, however radha aunty when she comes back she uh, she along with you know she goes to a play she and she goes she takes little rg rg also takes part in that play and radha aunty falls in love with a sinhalese boy anil but then as i had told you this novel is about star cross loving now when um, uh, this uh, young boy rg when he when he sees the love between radha and anil evolve he almost fabricates the entire wedding tale he chooses his place what he will be okay he'll be the bridesmaid or he'll be this or that and then but ultimately you know it's a question of so deeply ingrained ethnic values that a tamil cannot actually marry a sinhalese and also because radha aunty's grandfather was killed by the sinhalese in the 1950s sri lanka riots okay so you'll see how history is implicated through the family and this uh, also becomes something like personal history as well as public history um so okay uh another thing that props up in all of these is uh, you know the burghar okay b u r g h e r now these burghars were originally descendants of the germans right i'm sorry i'm descendants of the dutch okay so a particular uncle their real uncle comes to uh, their lives uh, once um, you know uh, rg's father leaves for you know he goes to europe and he goes to america because he has started a new uh, hot, hotel business with sena uncle and chitra aunty so he goes to america to promote with, with sena he goes to america to promote his hotel and in this interregnum of 2 3 months there is deri uncle who comes and visits rg and his mother and by now rg's mother uh, mother's sister nelly aunty also stays with them along with digi and sonali okay so deri uncle comes he is you know from his appearance you would see you would understand that he is an absolute white man 
but he is actually uh, a sri lankan who was uh, uh, you know left after colonialism went off okay so uh, in a sense because of the color of their skin they were racially superior they were affluent of course these people were also affluent and uh, you know uh, very soon a clandestine affair starts between rg's mother and their real uncle because uh, they were actually lovers and because of this racial difference again between the white uh, you can say he, he calls himself a tamil he calls himself a sri lankan their real uncle but then uh, you know this family um rg's mother's family Ma rg's mother's name is nalini so nalini's family nalini had actually did not uh, want to continue his uh, her relationship with him probably it was uh, recent land or whatever in any case deril uncle comes back he's a journalist from australia he had actually come back he works for the uh, morning sydney Uh, star newspaper he works for there as a journalist and he had come back to make a review of the situation in jaffna i did not tell you about this in jaffna the you know there was the propping up of immense intense um, tamil and sinhalese ethnic violence and jaffna was the seat of ltte liberation of tamil tigers ilam all right now as i had told you sri lanka is a place where sinhalese is the majority tamil is the minority so these ltte they were basically they were of course they were terrorists who had demanded a separate state for themselves and they were uh, working from jaffna and there was a lot of you know killing terrorist act all right so when radha aunty was uh, sent off by amachi because amachi did not want her daughter to marry the sinhalese anil so when radha aunty was sent off when she comes back okay radha aunty is actually attacked in the train because she is a tamil radha aunty and many of the tamil passengers were attacked in the train by the sinhalese and this actually entirely changes radha's attitude for anil even as she is in love with anil she understands that in a country like sri lanka this is never to happen and therefore she chooses to marry her you know the one the man who had proposed to her earlier rajin nagendra so uh, yes i was talking to you about deril uncle now deril uncle had come to investigate whatever was happening in jaffna particularly the you know deril uncle had told this little boy uh, rg that you know uh, tamil people were drawn out of their huts tamil people were drawn out of their houses by the sinhalese and kerosene was poured over them and it's also not just the sinhalese people but the government and the police were also in alliance with the people okay like they 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 will not um, you know it was a very populist kind of uh, government where the majority could do anything they wanted to do now in this uh, lines i just want to give you an idea of the uh, uh, sri lankan political scene the the basic parties uh, the main parties there were the united national party and the other party was the sri lankan freedom party so this uh, united national party is supposed to be more is supposed to be okay it's supposed to be more inclusive it um, um uh, it it give it, it had tried to give the status of minority to the tamils to the catholics okay it had uh, <coughs> you can understand more inclusive in the sense it had tried to be uh, non discriminating okay not uh, you know provoking any kind of ethnicity right or ethnic violence on the other hand you had the um, sri lankan freedom party which was very very exclusive in the sense it was pro sinhalese only all right and there was also a third party the ltte as i had told you the liberation tigers of tamil elam who wanted a separate state for themselves the tamils in sri lanka all right now 
these were a group of terrorists so uh, you know there there was a lot of uh, strife please remember that the you know on the one hand you have the united national party asking for a more inclusivist policy including everybody the catholic tamils as well as the sinhalese buddhists whereas you have them uh, you know very restricted sri lankan freedom party where you where they were not for the tamils and the catholics they were only for the sinhalese and the buddhists so uh, now what happens is uh, derry lankal has this relationship with the mother and uh, one day he says that i have to go to jaffna because i have come here looking for my you know he, he needs to gather material about whatever violence was happening there so when he goes there uh you know some days even some days after that 10 days or 11 days after that he doesn't return and that was a time when you definitely you didn't have a whatsapp call you didn't have you know internet or anything so the best thing was just a telephone so when he doesn't return uh, nalini and nalini's sister nelia arjit's mother and arjit's auntie they get very worried because deril was their childhood friend and about of course now uh nalini and their railway lovers right this exogamy as you call it, call it the extra marital affair so when when uh deril doesn't return it becomes a cause of concern for all of them and therefore uh nalia and nalini they go to the police and ultimately they understand that deril was very very brutally killed in the jaffna ethnic violence okay so ethnicity even to the extent of in uh, you know non tolerating a uh, white sri lankan okay to this extent uh then we go over to how also there is a lot of um, change in economic system all right when this uh, boy was very little when arji was very little remember that bright bright game and how tanuja comes back from canada she brings with her a very beautiful doll and for rg and his cousins a doll is a luxury because um, you know the sri lankan government at the time had restricted the coming of any kind of you know foreign goods but by the time rg grows up okay he becomes 12 year old 13 year old he sees that these restrictions have changed and now he finds his father was originally a banker but his father leaves his job as a banker he goes to you know open a hotel okay a paradise beach resort right and uh, he says that my family holidays have now changed my the friends that my family now takes they have also changed and now we you know are um, now we go to uh the intercontinental coffee shop all right we we go to uh, oberoi super club supper clubs sorry we go to cornell's supermarket right now all of these were american style supermarkets in other words you know it's a kind of uh, free economy you cannot say globalization exactly because globalization came much later to this part of the world but it was almost the beginning of a free economy where the outside world was allowed inside sri lanka so it's a kind of end of socialism so um you know these things uh, start and um uh you know the 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 parameters of economics also change all right parameters of economics i hope you understand the very uh you know tradition of people living there they become more affluent okay they are exposed to more uh, international things so uh, you have a small um, team on the changing economic scenario as well and then we have this chapter small choices all right i have no idea whether you are understanding or not okay i'm just uh, can anybody please respond <laughs> is there anybody i see a few names here it's um, heartening to see see names but i would be glad if somebody responds just kind of respond you'll have many names here in fact can you respond can you hear me 
just somebody any of the yes. students participants yes, yes please respond yes ma'am okay are you understanding what i'm trying to say yes ma'am you'll have time for yes. questions ma'am okay Okay, you'll have time for questions. I, I I cannot also understand my pace, or I'm going too fast or too slow, right? And this is actually my first hand trying in Indian writing in English, courtesy Mona Lisa, ma'am, of course. Okay, <clears throat> so you have this next chapter, small choices. Here, R G sees a different side of his father altogether because, uh, you know, uh, his father was always uh, very very. Uh, you know, disavowing of disapproving disapproving of his son's homosexual desires but then here we see here we here listen to a particular story where um his father uh, ajit's father talks about his uh, very close relationship with his friend parameshwaram all right a male friend parameshwaram and uh, how they were always together now uh, this is a kind of uh, you know if not homosexual at least a homo social relationship you understand the meaning of homo social relationship you know a relationship between the same gender which is not sexual not romantic or not physical okay so this is a kind of um, uh, this is a kind of difference that he sees and in his father and he also hears his father talking about his love story with a, a british waitress all right when his father goes to study in oxford he falls in love with a uh, waitress of the cafeteria a british girl but then he you know the father says that this girl was after all low class so whether you are a low class in sri lanka or a low class in england a low class is a low class and she could not fit to my family therefore i did not marry her okay so you can understand the implications of class right you can understand the implications of racism of gender and when i talk about racism see look at the way this burger man dairy uncle was killed by Uh, supposedly colored people the sinhalis okay or maybe how um, rg's father does not marry that white english woman just because of that class discrimination so this is a kind of you know subverting the tables earlier whites would not marry the indian or the asian or the colored because of the color of the skin but now look at this man you know uh, as a man of course he is uh, he has cheated this woman and number 2 as an asian man he has you know changed the dimensions of social existence okay as an asian man you know you are rejecting a lady from the ruling class no matter what whether she was she is a waitress or whatever right so um you know this chapter on small choices it it brings us to another character Jagan okay Jagan Parameswaram was the son of uh, Ajay's father's very close friend but uh, Parameswaram okay but Parameswaram dies and you know they had uh, written a letter and sealed it with blood you know Ajay's father and Jagan's father that we will uh, look after it, each other until death and uh, actually Jagan's mother kind of uh, uses this letter and calls up um, rj's father and tells him that uh, my son is now fatherless and therefore you have to take care of him now this jagan parameshwaram again becomes an again um, another important character here in the sense he is there only for one chapter but he becomes important in the sense that you know he was a member of the ltte which of course rj's father or his family did not know originally now he was a member of the ltte now of course he is not a member of the ltte he had worked very hard for the gandhi yam movement okay so uh, the gandhi yam movement here is actually the gandhi yam movement there who helped to uplift the poor and especially the refugees and the tamils the deprived the discriminated 
Now, Jagan is offered a very lucrative post because Jagan is a very hardworking boy. He is exceptionally, um, <coughs> you know, brilliant. He is uh, very good looking. And we also find how little RG, young RG, RG is by now an adolescent. He has, you know, uh, he, he, he finds Jagan very, very attractive. Uh, now we, we are almost uh, we are already aware about RG's homosexual inclinations. So Jagan is otherwise um, uh, very uh, efficient in his work, and therefore he is given a position of priority in in um, uh, you know RG's father's office in the hotels in the resorts. But somehow his past does not leave him. And uh, one day, actually, when RG and Jagan were, uh, they were jogging in the park, some members of LTTE come and speak over to Jagan. <coughs> Although Jagan tries to avoid them, uh, somehow somebody sees him talking to these members and Jagan is followed. And finally, he is uh, locked, kept in the lockup for a night. And despite, you know, RG's father's uh, links and despite RG's father's desperate measures to save him, Jagan is ultimately trapped. And later also in the hotels, um, you know, RG's father, because he's a, um, he is a Tamil, though he works, his partner Sena and Chitra, they are Sinhalese, though they work together, they have uh, enemies there in that, in that hotel business, in the uh, resort um, in the beach okay so these enemies this particular one enemy was a Sinhalese and his sons actually they are after Jagan and uh, you know the the, uh, the point it leads to is that Arji's father almost has to shut down his hotel if they allow Jagan to work with them so what Arji's father and uh, you know, uh, this man, Sena, they do is they offer Jagan a job, in, a very good job in Middle East and ask him to leave. But then Jagan, you know, how, how would you feel? He was just 25 years old. How would you feel living your own country? And now he does not have any connection with LTTE. All right. So, but then he is forced to leave. So this entire episode actually leaves um, RG and the entire family very very desolate and very very you know to this point Arjis father had believed that you know he believed that staying here in Sri Lanka I would still be safe with my family and he thought that he was being diplomatic in sending Jagan away right but then uh, Arjis father, uh, Arjis mother, Nalini, had already sensed the danger that was impeding. And so she says that we must think of, you know, going over to uh, the States as refugees. All right. So in this context, you shall also be learning about the refugee status that America provides, the 1951 Refugee Status uh, Conference and the 1967 Refugee Act. These allow, you know, people from other minority communities who are deprived in their own countries to come and stay in America. So, but then, uh, you know, RJ's father was still very bold and he was still very optimistic and he said that Sri Lanka is my country no matter I'm a Tamil I'm a minority here but I know things will change okay uh, so maybe Mona Lisa how much time do I have left uh, you have time you can carry on as long as you want <laughs> okay I hope I'm not boring anybody no, some people are leaving and some people are dropping in and dropping out. But I'm sure uh, YouTube is crowded. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I too would have done that given the choice. No, I would always go for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Now, what happens is, uh, you know, this chapter, therefore, is named as small choices. As a minority community in Sri Lanka, you have to, you had to compromise with certain things. So one example definitely is Jagan going away. And then you have, 
you know, again, even as uh, the novel is talking about ethnic violence, you have the thread of, you know, RG's thread of the awareness in RG's father that my son is a transgender. Okay, so what he does is he changes um, RG's school from St. Gabriel's, where he earlier read, to um, you know, Queen Victoria Academy. All right, Queen Victoria Academy, where his brother Diggy also studied, according to uh, RG's father. This is a school that his second son, RG, must also, Arjun, must also go because it will make a man out of him. So you can understand how uh, Arjun was forced to be a thing that he was not, right? Here the thing means a man. But then, uh, you know, the father's denial, okay? The society's denial, the text denial that there can exist another gender is very, very, you know, subtly brought out in the text, right? So. You know, this school is considered as a better school, as the better option, because RG's father thinks that his son will become a man there. Okay. So, of course, he is sent to Victoria Academy. And this Victoria Academy has, has its own story altogether. This is the fifth uh, story or the fifth chapter in the novel, the best school of all. Okay, here what happens is uh, one of the primary things thematically or structurally uh, that happens is RG himself becomes the actor. All the while, right, uh, like for example, in Pigs Can't Fly, you had his cousins, you had his Ammachi, Apache. In Radha Anti, you had Radha Anti and Anil. In See No Evil, Hear No Evil, that's chapter three. You had Derry Lankar and his mother. In Small Choices, you had Jagan Parameswaram, seen as a heroic figure by RG. Finally, in the best school of all, you have Arjun as the, uh, you know, uh, emerging protagonist. Uh, you know, RG's father had uh, actually um, apprehended and understood that in order to be able to survive in a country like Sri Lanka, okay, even as you are a Tamil speaker, you know, you, you, you had an elective subject in school, right? Where you can choose your mother tongue or you can choose your, uh, you know, whatever language, Hindi or Assamese or whatever other languages are provided, right? So in that particular elective language um, class, Ajay's father chose the Sinhalese language for his three children, thinking that this will make their prospect in Sri Lanka better uh, over Tamil. Okay, Tamil was their mother tongue, but then he chose to uh, make them uh, pursue Sinhalese language. Hello? Yes, you are a bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> so... I think when some participant joins, uh, you know, you yeah, have yeah. That, uh, there's yeah. a commotion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like in a classroom and somebody comes in, mm -hmm. may I come in, ma'am? <laughs> okay. Very good. Yeah. yeah. So this uh, Victoria, Queen Victoria, um, you know, Academy, the school that is, it was a microcosm of the entire, uh, you know, Sri Lankan political condition. You understand microcosm. Microcosm is a small model, okay, of the bigger world. In very plain terms, it's the small model of the bigger world. So you can say that um, you know this entire of Sri Lanka was enacted, of course, in miniature in this Queen Victoria Academy. For example, you had uh, gangs of Sinhalese boys. Okay, they were allowed to move around freely. They were allowed to roam around as uh, hooligans within the campus. And they can also actually bully the minor uh, Tamil boys. There is a particular incident where a Tamil boy was uh, taken to the, he was going all alone to the lavatory, to the men's toilet. And he was bullied by 
a, a gang of Sinhalese boys and it's like nobody ever took any action it's only just one of um, the boys Soiza we shall, we shall come to Soiza Soiza he is a Sinhalese himself but then he stops these other Sinhalese boys from this act right and uh, you have the headmaster here he is nicknamed as black tie because he wears a black tie now this black tie uh, just just like the uh, you know united national party i had told you about the more inclusive united national party that wanted to that was communally inclusive that was linguistically inclusive so uh, this uh, particular man this particular headmaster he wanted to defend the school's tradition all right he wanted that it should be it should have a bilingual kind of instruction that sinhalese should not be imposed and that there could be both tamil and sinhala speakers right and uh, the very name itself queen victoria is uh, you know reminiscent of the colonial legacy where in colonial times we as subjects all of us lived together okay but then in this particular school again black tie was a uh, headmaster the vice principal mr lokubandara okay lokubandara he wanted to rename the school after a buddhist priest all right who had advocated sinhala education so buddhism as nationalism right you can probably find examples in contemporary india when only you know one religion or one linguistic group is imposed over everybody else now this was the policy of the vice principal and this vice principal had a lot of political backing okay so um now uh, uh his uh, this vice principal's cousin was actually uh, a minister a cabinet minister so and this vice principal he was prying for the post of the headmaster ship and black tie black tie was a sinhalese himself but uh, he was more inclusionist in his policy uh, but then he was always um, at war with this particular uh, vice principal so even before joining the school digi had warned his younger brother rg telling him that black tie if you if you you know it's like agar uske pange pad gaye then you'll have a very bad day so he had warned him against black tie but then digi says that you know this vice principal lokubandara is actually like the snake in the grass he is the he's the hidden poison that you cannot uh, you know perceptibly understand but then he is the one who is you know somebody who is uh, pay, uh, playing so much of politics from behind okay so um, now black tie wishes to you know uh, gather public vote public vote in the sense that he, he thinks about um, uh, you know inviting one of the former students of that particular school this former student is now a very powerful cabinet minister and he wants to appeal to this cabinet minister by making a very powerful speech right so for this purpose he actually employs rg to um, recite a couple of poems but you know here at this point of time we see rg's growth and how he subverts everything okay so there are a series of things that lead to this am i running out of time should i stop here because uh, if i stop if i start talking about this thing i i won't be able to finish it in a couple of minutes what do you say no it's uh, absolutely up to you i mean how you have planned your lecture you can go accordingly there's no problem with us i mean if you want to continue then you can please continue and if you want to stop then maybe we can stop Mm, okay okay maybe i continue for 5 to 7 minutes because i'll have to be talking about a few other things tomorrow 
okay. for which I might not have time. Just just five to seven minutes, dear listeners. Thank you for being so patient. Just five to <laughs> seven more minutes. I mean, I bet I wouldn't have been this patient in this hot summer afternoon. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, what happens is. Right. So there was this um, boy, Soja. I had told you, Soja had earlier come to uh, this uh, RG's rescue. When RG was being ragged by some of the uh, Sinhalese boys, Soja had actually come to his rescue. Uh, and uh, he had actually helped RG out of the situation. And gradually, RG seems himself drawn to you know, uh, Soja's good features, but more than that, Soja's um, demeanor, Soja's uh, dare, okay. And, and also the fact that Soja is the only boy in the entire uh, school who has long hair, but then he uh, manages to, uh, you know, miss black ties, uh, penalties and punishments because he very, uh, you know, skillfully ties up his hair with hair clips and therefore he always escapes. Now, unfortunately, however, one day Soja was caught. Okay. Now, by this time, we already see a very, you know, matured uh, kind of homosexual desire developing between these two boys. Earlier, um, uh, RG was attracted to Jagan Parameswaram, but Jagan was uh, straight uh, in his orientations, and Jagan never thought of like that. Therefore, it was unrequited, partly unrequited. Okay, but uh, Soja was a homosexual himself, and uh, you know, one particular day during the drill class, uh, uh, this boy RG he notices that. Uh, because the drill teacher was absent and one of the senior prefects had come as their, uh, you know, so, as the drill teacher for the day. So Soja excuses himself from the drill period and he disappears and he comes back after 15, 20 minutes and the prefect says nothing to him. All right. Now, um, RG later learns from his own brother, Diggy, that Soja has... Uh, he has uh, a relationship with the head prefect of the school. So therefore, Soja is also a daring kind of student who doesn't bother to be, and everybody is actually literally scared about him. So, but unfortunately, Soja was one day caught by Black Tie. He was slapped and he was taken to Black Tie's office. And Black Tie's penalty was that, you know, he, uh, anybody who, dares to defy his rules, Black Tie would keep him out of the out of his office room, sometimes kneeling for hours and hours. And for days, that particular student for days, many days, he will not be um, able to attend classes. Okay. And he would be termed as the ills and burdens of Sri Lanka. Ills and burdens. I double L S ills and burdens. B U R D E N S ills and burdens in the sense that they are going Going to be the future malice of Sri Lanka. Okay, that they are going to spoil to be, you know, they are going to be spoiling the name of Sri Lanka, ills and burdens, and therefore they, they have to undergo a long series of penalties, a long series of punishments. Right, and uh, uh, so <clears throat> uh, Soja was also part of that, and um, one day this particular boy. He, RG, he was asked to recite a poem. The, the entire class was asked to recite a couple of poems. And RG was uh, very proficient in his recitation. Okay, so Sundara Lingam, their art teacher, was impressed by RG's renunciation. And therefore, uh, RG was called to the office of the principal. Okay, I think we should stop here. Can we continue tomorrow? We shall come up with uh, the queer theory and uh, some bit of post-colonialism as well as uh, a talk on the ethnic violence. Will that do?
Yeah, sure. It's not a problem. Okay. If there are questions, they might. Uh, they might yeah, ask participant. now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, participants, if you want to comment or you have some queries, you can just unmute and then speak to ma'am. Yes, participants. Would you like to comment? Or ask any question? I think uh, they and um, they will interact tomorrow, maybe after. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, after they yeah. internalize everything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mona Lisa, ma'am, dear coordinator, uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you so, so much for giving us your time, actually. It's OK. It's OK. <laughs> Nothing about that. So many participants here. Nice to see here and also in YouTube. Um, of course, um, I'll be coming back tomorrow with Funny Boy. And uh, after that, we're learning it. Thank you so yes. much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, participants. So we'll you, participants. Uh, meet again. Thank you. Yeah, and I shall send uh, send you the link uh, in a short while from now again for tomorrow's meet. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.